Welcome to Sage Audio. Today let's look at how to master in Logic Pro X. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Separate signal into three frequency bands. For this video, we'll only use Logic Stock plugins, so let's get creative with them and find ways to still make a great sounding master. I'll start by using three buses, all set to Unity. Then, I'll change the output of the channel to no output. Next, I'll use Logic's Linear Phase EQ on all three new auxiliary channels. The first is going to isolate the lows, the second one the mids, and the last one the highs. Now, I'll ensure that the crossover points are the same. For example, you'll notice that since the lows cut off at 300Hz, the high pass on the mids starts at 300Hz, and so on. Now, although unorthodox, this gives us the opportunity to process each range separately. Let's take a listen to the mix as we solo each range. Use subtractive EQ on each band. Next, I'm going to insert Logic's channel EQ on each auxiliary channel. I'll change the processing on the low channel to affect the side image only and attenuate up to around 80 Hz. On the mid channel, I'll process the side image as well and dip a little bit of 2 kHz. Then on the highs, I'll set the processing to the mids and attenuate some of 10.7 kHz, which is where I notice the most siblings. The first filter is going to make our lows more mono and focused. The filter on the mids will help the mono aspects of the vocal cut through, and the cut on the highs again helps to control sibilants. Let's take a listen to these filters enabled. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Compress each band and clip. After EQ, I insert compressors on each track, not really to control dynamics, but as a way to control the timbre of each signal. On the lows, I used a super fast attack, 40 millisecond release, hard knee, high ratio, and achieved only about a dB of compression. Additionally, I enabled the clipper on the output. Now all of these settings created a punchy, low frequency range. On the mids, I used similar settings, but I enjoyed the sound of the vintage FET emulation. On the highs, I used a softer knee, slightly longer attack, and a very low ratio to capture only the sibilance, in turn, DSing the mix. Let's take a listen and notice how the timbre of the track changes. Use subtle exciter settings. Logic's exciter lets us introduce low amounts of harmonic distortion and monitor the distortion by turning the dry signal off, which is really helpful. I'll lower the frequency all the way for all three, since it really doesn't matter as we've already isolated each frequency range. Then I'll turn off the dry signal and slowly introduce harmonics and flip between colors to hear the difference. Then I'll enable the dry again and repeat this until it feels like I have the right level and color for each band. Let's take a listen. Introduce sub bass on lows. Only on the low frequency channel, I'll insert the sub bass plugin and solo the channel to better understand its effect. I'll lower the center of the low frequency side and use a 2x ratio, meaning I'm making the generated signal twice as low as what's originally present. Then I'll blend the effect in using the wet slider and bring the dry all the way down if I want to hear only the effect. Let's take a listen to how this improves the lows. Amplify mid-channel for clarity. Now at this point, I'm noticing that the mid is lacking some clarity, so I'm going to add an EQ to only the mid-frequency auxiliary track and boost some of 2 to 3 kHz. Now if you find that you need to add some presence and clarity to any master, all you got to do is boost somewhere between 2 to 5 kHz. This is also going to make the master sound louder, reducing the need for more aggressive limiting later on. So let's take a listen 
And notice how it sounds a little clearer. Cut side lows from output. On the master output, I've added a linear phase EQ and set the processing to the side image. Since I'll be using this EQ to once again cut the side's lows, I want it to be linear phase to avoid aggressive phase changes. This is gonna help keep the lows mono. Now you may be wondering why I'm doing this again and in short, the sub bass processor that we used introduced more signal to the side image, which was muddying the sound. To keep the impact of the sub, but keep the master from being unfocused, it's best to introduce this type of filter. Let's take a listen. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Limit and clip output. Next, I'll add a compressor to the master output and set it to an optical setting. Now, although I won't actually compress the signal using the compressor, the optical setting imparts a tone regardless. I'll engage the limiter and very subtly limit and clip the signal. This gives it a nice sound and it sets us up well for more aggressive limiting later on. Let's take a listen. EQ to add subtle curves. Logic offers a good emulation of a Pultec EQ, which works really well when you're mastering since the curves it imparts are really gradual and natural sounding. Up top, I'll boost some of the kicks fundamental and boost some of 14 kilohertz and above to add presence and air. On the bottom, I'll dip some of 300 hertz to get rid of some unpleasant boxiness and then boost 3.5 kilohertz, which will affect both our mid and high bands. Lastly, I'll introduce a little drive at the output to get some collective distortion for the signal. Let's take a listen. Take a limiter and measure. Logic Pro X offers two stock limiters. The adaptive limiter has a smoother sound due to its built-in look ahead and adaptive release, which reduces transients, but it also helps to control distortion. The regular limiter helps preserve transients and has a more detailed sound, but with more distortion. Now, I think either one is gonna work well, and it comes down to preference in the genre. After picking a limiter, I'll use the loudness meter and try to get the loudness somewhere between negative 14 LUFS to negative nine LUFS. So let's take a listen, first with the adaptive limiter, and then with the regular limiter. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.